Greetings subscribers, The Suicide Squad was a movie released in August this year of 2021 which was a sequel to the movie titled Suicide Squad released in 2016. Yes, I realize how confusing that is. These movies are based on a team of DC comic book characters called The Suicide Squad which were first introduced in 1959 though the more modern version was introduced in 1987. A version of this team was also seen on the popular TV show Arrow which ran from 2012 through 2020. However, this team's first ever appearance in live action actually came in the TV show Smallville, which ran from 2001 through 2011 and was mainly about young Clark Kent before he becomes Superman. Based on my experience, it seems most people have seen a few episodes of the show, yet have no idea of just how many different DC comic book characters were depicted over the years, and most people are certainly not familiar with the Suicide Squad portrayal here. So today, I thought I'd go over the basic outline and highlights. First off, a quick warning that this video may contain spoilers, and while we've seen the team with so many different members in their different versions over the years, the only members seen here on Smallville were Amanda Waller, Deadshot, Rick Flagg, Plastique, and Emile LaSalle. I guess I should start with mentioning Season 8's second episode titled Plastique, which introduced the character of that same name. She's introduced as a teenage girl named Bette, who has the power to burn things with her mind and is running away from places as she's scared that she doesn't know how to deal with her powers. But when Clark and Chloe find her, they're able to see the good in her. Now I should mention that the character of Bette slash Mystique is played by actress Jessica Parker Kennedy. No, please don't confuse that name with Sarah Jessica Parker. And Jessica Parker Kennedy would later appear on the current Flash show in which she played the role of Nora. Barry and Iris' daughter from the future. Anyway, this episode ends with Clark and Chloe thinking they're sending Beth to an institution where she'll get the help she needs. However, not according to their plan, Beth meets Tess Mercer, the acting CEO of Luther Corp, who would eventually turn out to be Lex Luthor's half-sister. And Tess tells Beth that she's putting together a team which she'd like Beth to join. We next see Beth in Season 8's 21st episode, titled Injustice, in which we see Bette is working with DC comic book characters Livewire, Parasite, and Neutron as part of an unnamed villain group led by Tess Mercer, which is clearly not the Suicide Squad. Season 9's 11th episode, titled Absolute Justice, was a phenomenal two-hour special about the Justice Society written by DC comic author Jeff Johns. And one of the many things which this episode did was introduce the character of Amanda Waller, who was actually played by actress Pam Greer. Do I even need to list some of the countless movies and TV shows which Greer has appeared in? Anyway, although character Waller is not yet running the Suicide Squad in this episode, she does briefly say the name at the end. Season 9's 16th episode, titled Checkmate, shows us Waller running a group of that same name. This is of course based on that comic book character group. This episode shows us things going all wrong for that team. And it's important to note that character Tess Mercer is working with Waller and Checkmate at this time. Season 9's 19th episode, titled Sacrifice, shows us a little more of Amanda Waller and Checkmate. Then towards the end of Season 9's 21st episode, the season finale titled Salvation, we see Oliver Queen aka the Green Arrow crawling through air ducts and suddenly getting captured by an unidentified team. Then Season 10's first episode, titled Lazarus, picks up on that story. This is where the Suicide Squad story starts to really, finally, begin. We see Oliver Queen tied up and being beaten by comic book character Rick Flagg. For irony trivia, the actor playing Rick Flagg was Ted Whitall, who would later appear in the 2016 Suicide Squad movie as a completely different character, Admiral Olsen. Anyway, we see Rick Flagg eventually say he'll let Oliver Queen go. We see two different cars of Flagg's team meeting and exchanging masked prisoners. When the two prisoners are in opposite cars, they take their masks off, and we see that one is Oliver's expected, but the other is Chloe Sullivan. Season 10's second episode, titled Shield, introduces the popular comic book character of Deadshot. We see Deadshot repeatedly trying to kill Daily Planet employee Cat Grant but we eventually learn that the real reason Deadshot is going after Grant is because he knows Clark Kent will always save her. We also see Green Arrow going back after Rick Flagg. Flagg tells Green Arrow that he's part of a team, and Flagg actually asks Arrow to join that team. 
but Green Arrow refuses. At the end, we see Deadshot in jail, and then see Rick Flag and Plastique speaking to him, and it becomes clear that they all already know each other. They release him, and as they talk about their team, for the first time, we hear the name Suicide Squad. Season 10's seventh episode, titled Ambush, shows us Lois Lane's father Sam and sister Lucy Lane busy in the Ken farm. We also see that Rick Flagg is in town working alongside Emile LaSalle, who in the comic books is known as Warp. These two Suicide Squad members are tracking General Sam Lane, waiting to fire a missile at him. Perhaps I should mention that the actor playing Sam Lane is Michael Ironside, who has not only appeared in countless other movies and TV shows, but also played Captain Cold's father on The Flash. While the actress playing Lois's sister, Peyton List, also appeared as Captain Cold's sister on The Flash. And by the way, this Peyton List actress has no relation to the actress of the same name who appeared on Cobra Kai. Anyway, Green Arrow goes to Tess Mercer, who is now on their side. Tess is able to figure out that Oliver is being tracked by the Suicide Squad, and Tess is able to provide Oliver with a little information about that team, since Tess used to work with Checkmate, which is run by Amanda Waller, who also runs the Suicide Squad. Oliver goes to Clark and learns that he too is being tracked. Rick and Emil want to kill Sam Lane because he's trying to stop vigilantes, which they are. After their attempt to assassinate Sam Lane is unsuccessful, Clark and Green Hour approach them. Flag and Emil make it clear that they're not done, and Emil uses his powers to transport them to an unknown location. In the end, we see them posting anti-Superman symbols and blowing up buildings. Season 10's 11th episode, titled Icarus, shows us, spoiler alert, Hawkman getting killed. We then see several superheroes carrying his body inside a pyramid to leave the body alongside Hawk Girls. But suddenly, something unknown knocks them all unconscious and that's how the episode ends. Viewers had to wait a few weeks for the following episode, titled Collateral, to air. And when it did, we see Clark, Lois, Oliver, and Dinah Lance, aka Black Canary, back at their normal lives, with foggy memories of what's happened over the last few weeks. They all share this reoccurring vision of themselves in a laboratory, with Chloe looking over them. At one point, when Oliver ends up in a straitjacket, Chloe suddenly walks out of a wall and explains neither of them are really there. Ever since the blackout in the pyramid, the Suicide Squad has had the heroes' bodies in a lab hooked up to computers, studying their brains to try to recruit these heroes to the Suicide Squad team. Chloe has found a way to put herself in their dreams and communicate with them. Chloe also explains that in order to awaken, they just need to really believe everything they're seeing is not real. She gets Oliver and Dinah to do just that. In the lab, we see Rick Flag and Deadshot, and we learn that Chloe has started working with the Suicide Squad. We also learn that another organization, known as the Vigilante Registration Act, or VRA, is coming after the Suicide Squad. We see a battle with Green Arrow, Black Canary, Rick Flag, and Deadshot all teamed up to fight the VRA. By the end of the episode, we see Clark and Lois awaken and get back to reality, and that's pretty much the end of the story of the Suicide Squad on Smallville. Okay, so what was my opinion of the Suicide Squad in Smallville? I thought it wasn't terrible, but I wasn't crazy about it either. Contrary to what many other fans might say, I was not disappointed by the lack of characters which the Smallville producers could get the rights to include. I think the real problem for me when these episodes aired was that the show Smallville just had too many different stories happening at once. For example, in Lazarus, which first showed us Oliver getting beaten by Rick Flagg, there was also a story about Clark dying and coming back to life. There was also a story about Lex Luthor creating different clones of himself, both young and old. There was a great piece about Clark talking to the ghost of his father Jonathan. There was also a piece about Lois leaving for Egypt. There was even a piece about Darkseid. Then in the next episode, S.H.I.E.L.D., there was a lot of interesting stuff about Hawkman and Lois Lane in Egypt, a lot of interesting stuff about who this Cat Grant character really was, and Deadshot's story was really more of a solo story than about him joining the Suicide Squad. And by the time the Suicide Squad story ended, there was not one single character on the team who I really knew what happened to, 
including Amanda Waller, who he never actually even saw working with them. At the same time, I did think all the actors were very good in their roles and the action was very exciting. I just felt the writers tried to juggle too many different stories at once and that did not work for me. Watching the entire last two seasons of Smallville and trying to follow the story of the Suicide Squad was almost like playing a game of Where's Waldo? But at the same time, if you want to see a well-made episode about Deadshot, then do I recommend you watch the episode S.H.I.E.L.D.? Absolutely I do! If you want to see a good portrayal of Rick Flagg, then do I recommend you watch the episode S.H.I.E.L.D. Ambush and Collateral? Sure! If I were Siskel or Ebert, then I'd have a really hard time voting thumbs up or down here. It's good performances, good action, just in the middle of multiple stories that I personally find to be too scattered. But of course, all this is only my opinion, and I'd like to hear some feedback from you viewers. If you've enjoyed the Suicide Squad movies, but never seen these Smallville episodes, then has my video encourage you to watch them? Or if you've only seen the episodes of Arrowwood Suicide Squad? Or if you've already seen these Smallville episodes, then do you agree or disagree with my opinion? Please leave it all in the comments below, please hit like, and if you'd like to see more of my videos, then please feel free to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell. I would love to have you. Thank you.